serpent race to cover that up that you want to actually find out what they're really talking about they've done this number with the whole Aryan Anglo-Saxon they're the superior race bit using the swastika the Malta cross and the serpents because Naza meant Nagar it comes from Nagar or the serpent priest get these black people to stop saying this. It is a part of the lexicon. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Of our language. It, there's no vowels in the African language, in an ancient language. So the word nigga is the same as the word nega. Mm -hmm. And the word nega is the divine serpent, the kundalini energy of the kundalini serpent. Mm -hmm. And the kundalini serpent, kundalini serpent now is upon us because the kundalini serpent is what's giving global warming. The apocalypse is going on, it's going on inside of us, but it's also going on in a world that is directly, concurrently riding with our world. Negus. Negus. Um, what is the language of origin? Uh, Ethiopian to um, Amharic. Um, what is the definition? A king. It's used as a title of the sovereign of Ethiopia. Could you use it in a sentence? The Negus ruled Ethiopia until the coup of 1974. And, Andrew, would you say the word loudly for the judges? Negus. One more time. Negus. Negus. N e g u s. Negus. <laughs> Absolutely stunned. The word um. A-N-K-H. Again, ancient languages did not use the vowels. But this unk does not mean what we're told it means. We're told it means uh, the key of life or breath. No, in fact, it refers to a word that is known in Babylon and Samaria as the Anunnaki. Filling in the vowel sounds, we have the Anunnaki. And the Anunnaki or the Anunnaje meant the heavenly serpents, literally the gods. So any of the gods who are always shown holding the Ankh in their right hand. Jesus of Nazareth. The problem with that is they've never been able to find a place on any map at any time ever called Nazareth. So what does it mean? Again, just like the old uh, St. Patrick a gig when he was talking about the serpents, and we realized that the serpents did not refer to physical snakes, but it referred as a title to a kind of uh, tribe or a nation. So with the word Nazareth, it is actually a title. There was no locale called Nazareth. The word derives from the Egyptian Nazir, meaning the prince who is sent, and also from Nasir, meaning Sirius. That's a star, the star Sirius. So therefore, it is Jesus of Nasirius. Furthermore, the word carpenter, you can always hear about Jesus being a carpenter. This again is um, cryptic language. This is cipher language. The word carpenter comes from the word Nagar, which means the serpent priests. Freemasons, even to this day, will use uh, cover euphemisms like this. And instead of saying Mason, they may say the word carpenter. But everyone in the know knows what that means. And uh, in Revelation, Jesus' own words are, I am the root and offspring of David, and the bright and morning star. Well, wait a minute, I thought that's all iconography. I thought that's all paganism. But here's Jesus identifying himself with the morning star, with Venus. There's another group called the Nassines. Perhaps they were related. Anyway, this Gnostic sect believed that the serpent was the moist essence of God. Poseidon, this is the famous god, of course, of the ocean, but specifically he was the monarch of Atlantis. Po comes from the word Sirius, and Don, the lord of. And he was known as the creator of men, but also as the god of earthquakes. And his name means the lord of Sirius, meaning from another place, from the stars. 